Hi, welcome to another session of statistics. We know that statistics deals with data and we have learned in our previous session how we can analyze the data by using various tools and we learned it with respect to a smaller data set. And today we will again learn how to analyze the data but this time we will take a data that is comparatively large and we will see how to find the mean from that particular data. Last time we took a data from only one student. This time we are taking data of 50 students and the marks they secured in one paper which was out of 50 marks. And let's say we have taken it according to the roll numbers, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to arrange our data properly so that it is at least readable. Uh, mostly what we do is we keep the marks of top scorers first and then we slowly go down to the low scores. Now, if I have to find the mean or average of this particular data, then the conventional method is I have to take the sum and then I have to divide it with the total number of data points. And the answer that I'll get is this. Now, there is nothing wrong when we are calculating average in this way, but the only hitch is when we are actually calculating the sum. And even if we are using the calculator, what happens is it becomes quite tedious when the data is large. Just think it this way, whenever we have something in large amount and we want to work with it, what do we naturally do? We try to divide it in smaller groups so that we can handle it more easier, right? So we'll do the same with this large data, okay? And we'll divide it into smaller groups and sometimes we also call them class intervals. Since the marks are right from 1 to 50, so let's divide them like this, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. I can see in every group or every class I have this lower limit and there is an upper limit. And in every class there is a difference of 10 marks. How do we find it? We subtract lower limit from the upper limit and we get 10. Like 50 minus 40 is 10, 40 minus 30 is 10, 30 minus 20 is 10, like that. And this is what we call class size or the class difference. And now we will start grouping the students as per the marks they secured. So I can see that 7 number of students secured 0 to 10 marks, 10 students secured marks from 10 to 20, 15 secured marks between 20 to 30, then 8 from 30 to 40 and 10 from 40 to 50. Now this is nothing but called the frequency column denoted as Fi. I stands for the number of observations we have like this is going to be F1, F2, F3 but there is one disadvantage when we are working with a group data forget about this raw data for a second and just observe this group data that we have I can only know the range of marks secured by some students like 7 students secured 0 to 10 marks but I don't know what exactly were the marks for each of them okay so this is what happens with a group data some information is lost so at times we are just given this group data and we don't have the raw data with us then how do we find the mean of this group data and that is what we are going to learn today since we don't know the exact values of marks secured by the students so the mean that we will find is going to be something very vague or uh, we are just going to estimate the mean from this so we clearly cannot work with this range or group or class so what we do is we try to take a mid value from these classes and we call them as xi what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an average so I get 5 so I'm going to work with this 5 right now then 10 plus 20 divided by 2 is going to give me 15 same way we can do for every class so I'm getting 25 35 and 45 so remember we have to work with mid values when we are working with a group data now our next step is going to be the product of frequency and the mid values that is fi xi so f1 is 7 and x1 is 5 so 5 multiplied by 7 is 35 similarly f2 x2 is going to be 150 now the next step is we are going to take the sum total and what is denoted as sigma so if we are going to add up all the frequencies we know that there are 50 students so total frequency is 50 similarly when we are going to add up all the fi xi's then we get total of 1290 and now with this information we try to find the mean and what we do is we divide the sums of fi xi with the sum of all the frequency and what we get is 1290 divided by 50 
and we get 25.8 and when we find the mean or average in this way we call it the direct method now, if we notice carefully this method is nothing different than the conventional method we are just taking frequency in consideration now at times what happens is the data values are not so simple to work with okay they are heavy and they are large again if we are using the direct method it will not help so much because the calculations are going to get heavier okay so we have another method for our rescue which is called the assumed mean method and you will see that this will again ease up the calculations further what we do is from all the mid values which were the average of all the classes we take a middle value which we call as assume mean or a and we subtract it from each mid value now since we are going to subtract 25 from every mid value so we are going to deviate from these mid values by a factor of 25 so this is nothing but called deviation or di so the first deviation is going to be 5 minus 25 which is equal to minus 20 second will be 15 minus 25 which is equal to minus 10 then 25 minus 25 is 0 35 minus 25 is 10 and 45 minus 25 is 20. the next step is to find the fidi that is the product of the frequency and the deviations the first frequency is 7 we are going to multiply it with minus 20 and we get minus 140 similarly we'll do it for every class or every group now like we calculated the sum of fi and xi we will calculate the sum of all the fidis so we will add up all the negative values it is minus 240 then we add up all the positive values 280 so 280 minus 240 will give us 40. Again, we will do sigma fi di upon sigma fi. Now the only difference in this method is that we subtracted every mid value by a factor of 25. So in the end, in the formula, we have to add up that particular fact. Okay, so that will balance things out and we will get again the same answer 25.8. So this was quite simple, right? We again got the same answer. The only difference maker was this A. But mostly what we do is we take an observation which has the higher frequency. Okay, what if I go a step ahead of assume mean and I see in all the deviations, I have a factor that is common to every deviation. Uh, there is a factor of 10 that is common in every deviation and I will divide every deviation with that common number. Uh, let's call it H. So minus 20 by 10 will give us minus 2 minus 10 upon 10 will give us minus 1 similarly 0 upon 10 will give us 0 10 upon 10 will give us 1 and 20 upon 10 will give us 2 okay now this ratio of deviation and the common number is called ui okay further i'm going to take the product of frequency and the ui so let's see 7 multiplied by minus 2 will give us minus 14 10 multiplied by minus 1 will give us minus 10 0 and like we did for fi xi fi di i'm going to take sum of all the fi uis how do we find mean in this case we will add up the assumed mean because we know we have subtracted from the deviations a factor of 25 and now we will use sigma fi ui upon sigma fi instead and since we divided with a factor of h so we will multiply in the answer with a factor of h and that will balance things out so again we will get 25 plus 4 upon 50 multiplied by 10 which is equal to 25.8 now we can remember it this way since we take a step ahead of assume mean or the deviation so this is called step deviation and with every method the calculations become easier for example take a look at sigma fi xi which was 1 to 9 0 and as we go to the assume mean method it becomes 40 and when we use the step deviation method it further becomes 4 so quite clearly we can notice that the calculations become easier when we use assume mean method or the step deviation method especially when the data and the values are large so what we learned in this session when we have a large data then we can divide it in groups or classes and we can find mean by three methods that is direct method assume mean method and step deviation method and we'll get the answer no matter what but we have to keep in mind that every method employs a unique way of finding the mean or average in the same way in our next session we will see how to find mode of a group data